common mistake when creating an asset is to forget a required component. And doing so can break the game, and in the case of tens or hundreds of prefabs, it's easy to miss a component. And it's tedious or maybe not even practical to check each individual asset. So a solution is to make a custom attribute and a custom attribute validator. This could be tailored to a specific type of component, such as a rigid body or collider, or to make it more useful, we can make it generic to work with any type of component. To do this, we first need to create a new attribute. The attribute will have just one field to hold the type of the component that is required. The value of this field will then be assigned in a simple constructor. Next, we need to create the validator class. We can do this manually or use the Odin validator context menu in Unity's project window. Simply right click in your Unity project folder, select Odin validator, then create validator, and finally, the type of the validator you want to create. In our case, an attribute validator. When the pop-up window opens, choose the save location in the project along with the name of the validator. The new validator will inherit from attribute validator, which will take in two generic arguments. The first is the associated attribute, and the second is the value type the attribute will decorate. You can of course create a validator from scratch, but using the context menu adds in the needed namespaces, inherits from the correct class, and registers the validator or rule. It's worth noting that regardless of the type of validator, the process of creating one is very similar. And in each case, we will be overriding the validate function and then putting the majority of the validation logic inside this function. First, we need to check that the component exists on the game object. We can access the game object, or more generally, the value that the attribute is decorating with this.value. We then call getComponent and give it the argument of this.attribute.type and compare the results to null. If the component cannot be found, we'll then want to display a message in the inspector. And this is done simply by calling result.addError and providing an appropriate warning as a string. We can quickly test our new attribute validator by adding our new attribute to a game object field and giving the attribute a component to search for. Then, back in Unity, in the inspector, we can drop in a game object. If the game object doesn't have the component type on it, a message is displayed in the inspector. If you have the Odin validator installed, this message will also appear in the validator window, as well as the scene widget. So let's move on to our second example of an attribute validator, which is going to be more specific and less general in use. You could imagine a project where you want to ensure that the sprites being used are of a specific resolution. We could help remind ourselves or the designers with an attribute and an attribute validator. So once again, we'll create a new attribute, and this one will have an integer field that will store the desired size of the sprite. The size of this sprite can then be set by a constructor that takes in an integer. To make it a bit more user-friendly, we can add a second constructor that takes in a custom enum for the sprite size, like so. Then, just like the first example, we need to create the attribute validator class. When we do this, we need to make sure to include the type sprite as the second generic argument, since the attribute will go on a sprite field. Once again, we need to override the validate function and check to make sure that the sprite field is not empty. We can then define two integers. One is the desired size of the sprite from the attribute, and the other is the width of the actual sprite that is in the inspector. If these two values are not equal, then we can display a message. In this case, a warning may be more appropriate than an error. In our message, we can also let the designer know the desired size as well as the size of the currently assigned sprite. We can then quickly test our new attribute validator by creating sprite fields, decorating them with our new attribute, and assigning sprites in the inspector. If the size of the sprite isn't correct, we'll get a message in the inspector letting us know what size sprite was expected. And there you go, it really is that easy to create custom attributes and attribute validators with Odin Inspector and Odin Validator.